All right, that took a little bit of effort there, but I finally got this thing working. So now we can do a video. Um, okay, so I am here today to show you what I've been working on and to uh, maybe record a little step-by-step -step thing here. Um, all right, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of Eldar on my desk today. Um, we got ourselves one of the Plastic Autarchs, Wraith Knight, a Wraith Seer who's mostly painted, and a couple of Falcons um, that I just I built and primed up today. And uh, I'm going to be airbrushing them. They're going to be airbrushed in turquoise. And then some light turquoise and uh, deep sky blue, then deep sky blue uh, edge lining, at last highlight. And uh, that, that's going to be... That's how I do my, my Eldar, which if you've never seen them before, they look pretty good. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, the way they look. Um, and of course, I've got some Blood Angels down here that I, uh, I primed up yesterday, Drop Pod, and my last 10-man tactical squad from the trail at Kalf. Um, but I figured what I'll do, because I could record everything I'm doing, but it would require a lot of editing going back through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this step by step. So the next thing you'll see will probably be all of this after it's had a, a turquoise spray on it. And one of the things that makes um, the, the way that I paint my Eldar look really cool is this effect right here. This uh, hexagonal effect that uh, I put on all my Wraith units. Um, and that is accomplished via this. This is mosquito netting that I found at a Kmart in Utah, and it is perfect for getting that uh, those little hexagons over round surfaces. So I just wrap it around, stick some blue tack on there to hold it in place, and this does not come off until I am done painting, um, which means I have to do a lot of cleanup on it because, like uh, these, these gems and stuff, which aren't really gems, they're not gems, they are sensor nodes that are psycho reactive. Uh, but anyway, I'll have to do those in more solid color because I don't want them to have the same um, hashing on it. I don't know what the word would be. That's the only thing that comes to mind. The only problem I'm having with these is that I don't have any more of these. So like these three guys, I don't have cockpit canopies for. Um, but I'm going to paint them up and then when I get a hold of some cockpit canopies, I'll put them on there. Uh, I like them clear anyway, so I, the only ones the ones I have painted are only painted because they're glued on, and I didn't really have a good way to mask them. And the guys inside are already painted, so if I did mask it, the guy inside would be red instead of um, being the, the turquoise color that I like to use now. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, I have some other stuff I'll show you guys later, uh, maybe during a more hobby update thing. But I wanted to introduce you to what I'm doing here before I get started on it. And I might just record the whole thing and do this as a Zenish painting video. Um, which, if you aren't aware, I'm, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I stole that idea from Oasis Rising. So if you want to check out other Zen painting videos where it's just someone painting with some nice calming music to go with it. Uh, and just doing a step by step as they go, it's, uh, it's real quiet and it's wonderful. I really suggest checking out uh, Michelle's channel, Oasis Rising. She's a member of the War Games Consortium. Uh, there haven't been a lot of updates there as of late, but the, the her old content is still really good to go back and watch. Uh, she's a very talented artist. Um, and uh, usually, I think, goes to Adepticon, so if you go there, I think she's com she competes in Crystal Brush, so check out her work. Anyway, um, I'm going to set this up, and uh, I'll be right back with you. Alright, so, what we have before us here uh, is, in fact, my Eldar. Um, I didn't get a chance to spray them last night because I needed to wait for uh, primer to cure. So, I'm going to be doing some uh, base coating, essentially. With, uh, with some airbrush colors, this is my turquoise all mixed together. It's actually game color turquoise. Um, it used to be falcon turquoise, now it's just plain turquoise. And then uh, doing a highlight with light turquoise from Vallejo model color, and finally deep sky blue from Vallejo model color. Um, I have looked all over, and I really wish 
that Vallejo would just release air paints of those three colors, but they don't. They have no air colors that are turquoise. So I get their brush. Um, and today I'll be painting up two falcons, uh, which I will hopefully be using in a game today, as well as an autark, who I'll also be using in a game today. Then while we're on the subject, um, the autark is the cheapest HQ available to the Eldar currently in 40k. Um, and this setup the Games Workshop chose for their Clam Pack Autark is stupid. <laughs> it's Manda Blasters, a power weapon, Fusion Blaster, uh, not Fusion Blaster, Fusion Pistol, and Swooping Hawk Wings. This brings it to 140 points <laughs> from 70. And it's not even the best options you can give them. Honestly, uh, if they would just release one that comes on the new jet bikes, I'd rather have that. Maybe give it a... Um, Oh, even better if you if you put out bike and give him the Dark Reaper launcher because um, he gives it he's relentless on a bike. So, but uh, I'd have to custom build one of those. I've even got one that I've kind of been working on up in, in here. You can't see it, but I've up in my um, my bins here over here. Yeah, uh, I've got one partially assembled to be just that. Uh, the other stuff I'm going to work on, I'm going to be trying to do some updates on my Wraiths here. Uh, who, as you'll notice, does not have a shoulder-mounted weapon, and I don't think he ever will. His base statistics, or base uh, unit stat, um, like if you just buy him flat, doesn't come with a shoulder-mounted weapon. <laughs> he just has his spear. Uh, and since my uh, the D cannon he came with was so miscast, I had to throw it away. Um, and it's... Chinese resin, so it's as I can't like call up Forge Worlds. Hey, I need a new one of these. Um, and then uh, also, that, of course, I got my my Wraith Knight down here, who's you know on pieces, who I will be trying to put some paint on. If not, maybe uh, I'll do a separate video just for him. But um, yeah, that's what I'm working on today. So this will probably be fast forwarded and uh, sped up and put some background music to it. And it's just going to be a video of me painting. Uh, if you've ever wanted to see how I get my Eldar painted. Uh, because you've probably seen them in other videos before where I've, I've used them, had them in the background, or um, maybe you saw one of the Blue Table Painting Battle Reports where I had them and liked the color scheme. So uh, this is an opportunity for you to see how I do what I do. Because that's how I do.
so it's just occurred to me I uh, did not mix up my other paints so um, this might be a little more uh, difficult than originally in originally planned to film because I have to mix up paints other than my turquoise in order to be able to, to do this um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it filming um, this may or may not get cut out uh, either partially or in its entirety we shall see uh, but just so you know uh, the way I, I mix up my paints for airbrushing is I went to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or some store like that and I bought uh, some of these the, um, dropper bottles that come in a three pack for like three dollars they're not very expensive um, and I just uh, I put in a mixture of one to one paint to thinner. Uh, recently, I've been using this. Uh, I've also I've also got the airbrush medium. I use that sometimes. It tends to depend on the paint itself. Um, some paints mix better with the liquid text. Some mix better with the testers. It's a crapshoot, really. Um, but that's, uh, that's that's how I mix my paints. And I said it's a. Uh, I can never be sure which one's going to work best, so I tend to switch it up from time to time just to see if, just to see if one thinner slash medium is going to work better for me. Uh, so I'm going to mix up some... Ooh, that wasn't bad. Some light turquoise and some deep sky blue uh, for airbrushing on the next layer here. Um, as you can see, so far it's not an overly complicated thing to do to just put on a layer from an airbrush. Uh, you do have to consider shading. So, so like you can see here, uh, I went real light with the blue there. There is actually turquoise there. It's just, it's so light you don't really see it. Um, with base coating with an airbrush, your goal isn't 100% coverage. And it's not like laying down colors with a brush where you just, you want to cover everything. Um, it's not my ultimate goal with this. Uh, in fact, because uh, airbrushing gives you a slightly translucent layer of paint instead of the solid opaque that you tend to get when you're just straight brushing, it allows you to do stuff like this shading variant here where it gets darker as it's coming down and then gets brighter again when it reaches the edges. Um, and I think that's what makes airbrushing look so good on models is because you can get that kind of back and forth uh, between the shades and the highlights without having to do massive amounts of brush blending. That's why people think airbrushing is cheating. Hold on a second. Alright, so I made an oopsie. Um, I thought I hit record when in fact I had stopped the recording. I should have known by the fact that the red dot wasn't on the screen. So um, what you missed was me mixing up some paint and <clears throat> of uh, light turquoise and then applying said light turquoise to my models. Um, you should be able to hopefully see in the uh, in the image here that uh, we do have some slight highlights, some more variation in the color <clears throat> and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply my deep sky blue and for that I have switched to my Badger Patriot 105 uh, the airbrush I was using before is a Neo by Iwata, and it's really good for laying down uh, base coats, basically. But um, so anything that you're looking that I'm looking to do, like thick, uh, heavy kind of layers or highlights, the the Neo works perfectly for. But for anything even slightly more detail oriented, I switch to the Badger, and uh, if I feel the need to go really, really detailed. I switch over to my my Sotar. Um, uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of airbrushing, especially if you plan to do more than just base coating with it, I recommend owning at least two, um, just just so you can switch back and forth quickly and easily uh, without having to do a full clean in between each use. Like I, when I'm done here, I'm obviously going to take apart both these airbrushes, run them through my Sonic cleaner, uh, and then give them the full once over. Um, but uh, but for doing something like this, I, I like to be able to switch real fast without having to uh, clean the airbrush in between. I give it a, a light cleaning 
um, you know, scrub out the, the cup and uh, brush off the, the tip, make sure there's no dry tip, make sure there's no paint in the, in the nozzle um, to, to dry up in there and, and clog it up. But uh, yeah, so sorry you guys missed that part. Um, but it's recording now, <laughs> so you'll get to see me do the deep sky blue highlight. Um, from there, after the deep sky blue, everything else is brushwork. So uh, this might be all you really get from this video is uh, is just this basic uh, airbrush stuff. Because I, like I said, I'm going to be playing in a game this evening using these three models. So uh, the third one being the Autark that you can't really see back there. Um, so uh, I don't know that I'm going to do much more other than just get the airbrushing done so they at least mix well with the rest of my army. Um, I decided I wanted to try out a tank list for my Eldar, just see how it plays, see how it feels, see if it feels good, you know? I don't use a lot of tanks, so I play mostly foot dar. Um, so it's going to be these two and a, a night spinner, um, a, uh, three hornets, uh, some jet bikes, a farseer and Altark. Oh, see how it plays. Hopefully it'll be fun. So, uh, alright, back to the airbrushing.
Alright, so that pretty much takes care of the uh, airbrushing stage on these four models. Um, I lowered the PSI while I was spraying, before spraying on the, um, or while I was spraying on the uh, D-Sky Blue, and I'm not sure if it worked out the way I want I usually spray it a little below 40, 40 PSI, um, and I'm not sure if it was because the paint was a bad mix, or if the, that PSI just was not working this time around, but um, I was getting really iffy results with it. Um, I think, at least on the Wraith Seer, I might go back over it again when I paint up the Wraith Knight, just to see if I can get some better results. Um, because it, it worked great for the, the Autark. The Autark, uh, is, you, know, you can't really see it right there, maybe I'll have to show it off later. Um, the Autark is going to need... Well, it doesn't need a whole lot, actually. The airbrush worked just fine on him. Uh, for the most part, it worked on the tanks. You may have noticed a couple times when I got more paint than I asked for. <laughs> um, and uh, I think before we go, the one last thing, since my airbrushing on the tanks is all done, uh, I will keep you with me to show off the thing that I like doing with vehicles. Because uh, one of the problems with airbrushing vehicles is, unless you're going to go back over and do a whole bunch of freehand, or add de a whole bunch of decals or something, and then they end up looking real flat, even with the airbrushing. So to fix that, what I do is I like to mask off some areas where they will not be airbrushed at all. So in this case, I left uh, some spots on the Falcon turrets and on the front parts of the grav tank where they will have black chevrons instead. Um, so, I'll keep you around for a few minutes here, uh, show you what that's going to look like, because obviously I'm going to go through and I'm going to add some highlights and stuff to, to where the chevrons are, because um, otherwise they look real flat, just black. Um, but I did spray around the tape, which gives it a nice highlighted look just around the black and I think this looks it ends up looking a whole lot more interesting a lot more variation in the, in the color scheme um, it does definitely need highlighting otherwise it's just flat black and that just never looks good no one likes a chaos dwarf you know what I mean um, so let's go ahead and, and get the one the pieces off of this tank as well and uh, See what my final results from the airbrush look like. I don't anticipate there being any problems with it because you know I have a pretty good idea of what to expect here. But there we go. This is uh, this is what my basic color scheme looks like. I like it. It gets the job done for me, and if it gives you some ideas on how you want to paint up your stuff and. Uh, maybe gets you interested in doing some airbrushing. Airbrushing can be expensive. Uh, it doesn't have to be though. Um, I highly recommend it to anyone who's interested in, in painting up basically massed armies. If you're going to be painting up more than like 10 models at a time, airbrushing is the best way to do it. It's the cleanest way I found to paint tanks. I tried doing tanks with just regular brushes and even with just spray paints. And it ends up coming out so much better looking with an airbrush. So uh, that's uh, that's it for today. Um, I will probably come back at some point and show you what these things look like finished. Because obviously this is just base coats. That's that's all this is. This is essentially I've laid down my main colors, and now I'm going to move on to brushwork. Um, I'm painting their catapults and uh, the engine intakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's it, and uh, next time I see you, I should have these all done, and in the meantime, keep up your, uh, your hobby work, guys, um, keep painting, keep gaming, uh, keep having fun with it, and as usual, 
If there's anything that you would like to see on the channel, let us know. Uh, we are happy to try and accommodate any requests that you have for things you want that you're interested in. Because we know that if you're interested in it, it's more likely you're going to watch it. Um, so if you'd like to see more battle reports or more painting tutorials, if there's a particular um, thing that you'd like to see painted, uh, let us know. I'm, <clears throat> I don't game as much as I paint, so if there's a model that you'd like to see how we paint it, let us know. And uh, it might be I'll just go out and buy it and paint it, <laughs> even if I never use it. Maybe I'll buy it, paint it, and sell it. Who knows? Uh, anyway, uh, hope you guys are having a great spring, and keep up the great work, geeks. Mm -hmm.